if you just try to imagine and look into the future, which is of course a very difficult thing to do, but let's make, let's, let's try to do it anyway. Where do we think things will be in five years or in 10 years? I mean, progress has been really stunning over the past few years. Maybe it will be a little bit slower, but still, if you, if you extrapolate this kind of progress, we'll be in a very, very different place in five years, let alone 10 years. It doesn't seem implausible. It doesn't seem at all implausible that we will have computers, data centers that are much smarter than people. And by smarter, I don't mean just have more memory or have more knowledge, but I also have, mean have deeper insight into the same subjects that we people are studying and looking into. It means learn even faster than people. Like what could such AIs do? I don't know. Certainly if such an AI were the basis of some artificial life, it would be, well, how do you even think about it? If you have some very powerful data center, that's also alive in a sense, that's what you're talking about. And when I imagine this world, I, I, my, my reaction is, gosh, this is very unpredictable. What's going to happen. Very unpredictable, but the bare minimum, but there is a bare minimum, which we can articulate that if such super, if such very, very intelligent, super intelligent data centers are built, being built at all, we want those data centers to hold warm and positive feelings towards people, towards humanity. Because those, this is going to be non-human life in a sense, potentially, it could be potentially be that. And so I would want that any instance of such super intelligence, the warm feelings towards humanity. And so this is what we are doing with the super alignment project. You're saying, hey, if you just allow yourself, if you just accept that the progress that we've seen, maybe it will be slower, but it will continue. If you allow yourself that, then can you st can start doing productive work today to build the science so that we will be able to handle the problem of controlling such future super intelligence of imprinting onto them a strong desire to be nice and kind to people. Because those data centers, right, they'll be, they'll be really quite powerful. You know, there'll probably be many of them that will be, the world will be very complicated, but somehow to the extent that they are autonomous, to the extent that they are agents, to the extent they are beings, I want them to be, to be pro-social, pro-human social. The, 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 the friendship piece I think is optional, but I do think that we want to have very pro-social AI. I think it's. I think it's possible. I don't think it's guaranteed, but I think it's possible. I think it's going to be possible and the possibility of that will increase insofar as more and more people allow themselves to look into the future, into the five to 10 year future, and just ask yourself, what, what do you expect AI to be able to do then? How capable do you expect it to be then? And I think that with each passing year, if indeed AI continues to improve and as people get to experience, because right now we are talking, making arguments, but if you actually get to experience, oh gosh, the AI from last year, which was really helpful this year, it like puts the previous one to shame and you go, okay. And then one year later and one year it's starting to do science, the AI software engineer is starting to get really quite good, let's say. I think that will create a lot more desire in people for what you just described, for the future super intelligence to indeed be very pro-social. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of disagreements, it's going to be a lot of political questions, but I think that as people see AI actually getting better, as people experience it, the desire for the pro-social super intelligence, the humanity loving super intelligence, you know, as much as this, as, as much as it can be done, will increase. And on the scientific problem, you know, I think right now it's still being an area where not that many people were working on. Our AIs are getting powerful enough where you can really start studying it productively. We'll have some very exciting research to, to share soon. But I would say that's the big picture situation here. Just really, it really boils down to look at what you've experienced with AI up until now. Ask yourself, like, is it slowing down? 
will it slow down next year? Like we will see and we will experience it again and again. And I think it will keep, keep and what needs to be done will keep becoming clearer. Oh, it is indeed the case that we are in an acceleration phase. You know, it's hard to say, you know, so multiple forces will come into play. Some forces are accelerating forces and some forces are decelerating. So for example, the cost and scale are a decelerating force. The fact that our data is finite is a decelerating force to some, de- to some degree. With, with the data in particular, I just think it won't be, it just won't be an issue because we'll figure out some, something else. But then you might argue like the size of the engineering project is a decelerating force, just the complexity of management. On the other hand, the amount of investment is an accelerating force. The amount of interest from people, from engineers, scientists is an accelerating force. And I think there is one other accelerating force. And that is the fact that biological evolution has been able to figure it out. And the fact that up until now, progress in AI has had up until this point, this weird property that it's kind of been, you know, it's been very hard to execute on, but in some sense, it's also been more straightforward than one would have expected. In some sense, I don't know much physics, but my understanding is that if you want to make progress in quantum physics or something, you need to be really intelligent and spend many years in grad school studying how these things work. Whereas with AI, you have people come in, get up to speed quickly, start making contributions quickly. It has the flavor is somehow different. Somehow it's very, there is some kind of, there's a lot of give to this particular area of research. And I think this is also an accelerating force. How will it all play out remains to be seen. Like it may be that somehow the scale required, the engineering complexity will start to make it so that the rate of progress will start to slow down. It will still continue, but maybe not as quick as we had before. Or maybe the forces which are coming together to push it will be such that it will be as fast for maybe a few more years before it will start to slow down. If at all, that's, that would be my articulation.